Hi, Karen. How are you today? I'm great, Janelle. How are you? I'm great. And thank you so much for joining us today. I'm super excited to talk to you uh, about uh, Milliard Bank and your role that you have there. You are the vice president of uh, of business banking. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So tell me about that. What does that role entail? Really, it entails um, mostly business development and working with small businesses um, of all sizes. Uh, and I mean, the definition of small business can go up to, um, believe it or not, you know, a couple of hundred, couple of hundred employees. Mm-hmm. Um, it's where my forte is. I like working with the smaller businesses. I have worked with small banks for a long time, but business development um, so that I can reach out, let the community know who we are, what we are, what we do, um, and make them aware of events, help them out as far as the you know community goes with many different nonprofits. We donate, we volunteer, we, we are a true member of the community. Mm. So, and that's, that's what I kind of promote for the bank. And so you said, uh, helping people know who you are. So Milliard yes. Bank. So tell me about Milliard Bank, what differentiates Milliard from other banks in the area? Um, and, uh, and, and, you know, what's, what's their mission, you know, that you stand behind that you decided to partner up with them? Okay. Um, Milliard Bank, being very young, was founded by Frank Tees um, with a very strong board of directors um, that he did get the commitment from in the beginning that we were going to stay a community bank. In other words, not sell out to one of the big boys. And um, the big banks, they have a very different mentality than, than we do as a small community bank. We are here to help those small businesses um, in the community, whether it's funding they need, any fi- any financial type need that they have, whether it be checking or savings or wire transfers, anything that they need, we can do all the same things that the big banks do on a smaller scale. Um, we don't have the big fees, but it's mostly the fact that we want the community to thrive. Small businesses have a tendency to fall through the cracks with big banks. Mm -hmm. And with us, you're going to talk to a person whenever you want something, whenever you need something, a question, you can call, you can ask, you can actually talk to a person, Um, which I think is kind of unique today because so many places have those automated attendants that can transfer you, you know, push this button. We don't, we don't do that. When you call, you will get a person. If you don't get a person, you'll get a voicemail from me, but I will call you back personally. Mm -hmm. Um, Even on my business cards, we have a tendency here to put our personal cell phone numbers on those cards so that if you can't reach us in the office, or if you have a question at night that you forgot to ask during the day, you can always reach out to us, any one of us, and um, we'll answer your questions. I've been doing it for years. I've answered phones on the weekends. Um, but it's really, it, it's something that does set us apart from somebody else, your mm-hmm. bigger banks. You know, and how important, because as a small business, you know, um, I know you said that some small businesses can have up to 200 employees, which gets you know, almost like it has a very large feeling to it. However, you know, a lot of small businesses need support. They need to outsource, you know, um, uh, the knowledge of others that maybe they're still trying to figure out. And money is a really big part of that, isn't it? Like that's what makes the business function. So to be able to reach you and, you know, about a question uh, is a really important support system for people uh, because my gosh, then, you know, I'm sure, you know, the feeling like I'll speak for myself when I go to bed at night, it's not like, you know, Wendy's is closed. And so I've now shut my brain off from Wendy's. It's constantly thinking. Right. And so, my gosh, if there's an important question to be able to call you and say, Karen, I need help, you know, 
that must, and it, I'm sure it feels so good for your clients to know that you have an answer for them fairly immediately. Sure. sure. Yeah. You know, and the thing is, you know, taking in deposits in the area, you know, in the communities um, allows us to be able to lend to those businesses. And in return, seriously, it makes the community, uh, the economy thrive mm. and which shine through. Which is something about Milliard, right? I looked up the history of Milliard and how they came up with their name. And uh, and I'll just say something brief about it. I don't know if you can elaborate, but, uh, you know, it, uh, you know, of course, Nashua was a big Milliard town. And so mill workers would get their paychecks. They would then boost the economy by investing their money back into small businesses which then in turn would make the the economy and local community thrive, right? Is that right? Exactly. That's exactly what it is. That's the whole reason that we, uh, that they came up with the name Milliard, but also um, that's the whole reason we exist. Yeah. Yes. Community. Right. Yes. So important to invest back into our community for sure. So you, okay, so you are a people person. You love to help people. You tell me about the history of you in business, because um, if I'm not mistaken, you've been, let's see, a business development agent. You've been a vice president of commercial uh, loans. You've been a small business lender. So there's a theme there. You're always there to help, you know, anchor people and support sure. them to push them to the next step. Tell us about that. Yeah. Um, well, I started in banking many, many years ago. And when my kids were young, I worked part-time so that I was able to be there for them in the morning, get them off the, you know, get them onto the bus, get them off the bus in the afternoon. Um, so I was a part-time teller back then. So I have done everything straight through commercial lending, um, whether it be teller manager, branch manager, assistant branch manager, I have done all of it. But I think the main reason that I have thrived in banking is because I do like helping people. And it makes you feel good about yourself and what you do when you see the success of somebody that you've been able to help. Mm -hmm. um, so that I would say is probably the main reason that I have stayed in banking. Um, I love it. Um and I think, you know, just be under the understanding all of the roles that I've played in banking um, has given me, I think, a richer knowledge than someone who comes in, say, um, mid-level or upper level. Um, I have a true respect for everybody from the front line to everybody through the back um, office. And there's a lot that goes into operations Mm -hmm. um, so I think really helping people, it, it is what I'm about. It is what I'm about. It helps me thrive. Mm -hmm. I'm so, you know, that's such a universal thing that I hear so many people say in so many different industries, it essentially comes down to the reward, the gift of giving that feels really good, right? The payment sure. is the, the good feeling of once you give your time and resources and energy to somebody else. Um, and you see them succeed or, you know, you see them have like a sigh of relief. Uh, that's that's the joy. That's the gift. You sure. Know? Yeah. It's also education, too. I mean, it's yes. educating them as far as what what they might need to do to be able to get to the next level. Mm -hmm. um, whether it's with their, you know, it's how they manage their money, um, mm -hmm. whether they're looking for a loan, a line of credit. Any of that, I mean, the the education that you can actually supply them um, with those in the really early stages of startup businesses, it's um, very rewarding on the other end mm, Yeah, to look education back and see how is. successful they've become. Yeah, education is huge. You're right. That's a great word. It's like a key word. You know, so many times I, you know, if I'm asking questions, that means I'm trying to learn, right? And then when you get an answer and it makes something click, it's like, ah, oh, you know. <laughs> Eureka. <laughs> so, you, so you've been a really active part in the chamber for many years. And I was wondering if you could share with us just the, the history, if you could reflect back on um, just the evolution of the chamber and how you've seen it grow and uh, in business development and community development, if there are any uh, highlights that you would like to share 
that you've seen happen more recently um, that really, you know, kind of, you know, sing true to like, you know, what you're doing is good. What we're doing is good. Sure. Um, I would say, um, especially anybody just getting started in a business, join a chamber of of commerce. Um, I, I was actually new to the Milford area um, when I took a job with St. Mary's Bank way back when, in 2007. And I believe that it was 2008 um, that I I became really involved with the chamber, so much so that um, I was asked to sit on the board. And at first I was the treasurer, and then I went on to become the chairman of the board. Um, it's such a great way to be able to meet people. And if you're just getting started in the chamber, I think one of the best things to try first is the um, ambassadors. Because the ambassadors we used to do, and I don't know that they still do, but we used to buddy up with a new member Mm. so that we would get to know the new member. And we would also bring that member to these meetings, invite them and go with them to the business after hours or to the lunch and learns, um, just so that they can become more acclimated into the community um, and into the business community. I would say watching the chamber come from a very small, I mean, we, we went from being small to now, which, because I also sat on the Merrimack Chamber of Commerce mm. board and got the two together to be able to talk, to merge the two together. Um, I think it's the best thing for both chambers um, that ever happened. We were able to spread the word a little bit more, but also I think Merrimack being a small community as far as the way their town is set up. They don't really have a town center. Mm -hmm. Amherst is very much the same way. Mm -hmm. But having those in common, I think those those things actually help to make that chamber bigger and better. And the uh, referral group that they have there, the um, I would say the events that have really evolved are the best of Sauhegan or best of Greater Merrimack, Sauhegan Valley, but also um, the awards dinners. When you see how many people show up at these things, because they understand that it is it is a value to them personally, to their business, to the community as a whole. So as far as the the best or the most recent that I've seen, the most recent change, um, that's so hard to say. I think the groups, because there's so many groups that have evolved through the years, as far as the um, chamber chat, coffee meetings, the um, wild. That's a great, great addition mm-hmm. to the chamber because there are so many women in business. And I think um, meeting the other leaders in those businesses helps them to grow. And I would say that is probably the the best new event that they have mm-hmm. is that wild. Yeah, that is a really fun event. They just uh, recently had one that I couldn't attend, but uh, it's so it's so fun to see such a dynamic group. Right, we're all women. However, we're all from very different walks of life with different types of experience in different industries. And then you know, to when you get a large group of people together in in with so many facets and uh, you know different backgrounds and experience. And then you realize that there are some there's overlap to people having the same questions, concerns, you know, success stories, stuff like that. All of a sudden you realize there's really not a very large degree of separation between all of the industries and all of the women in business. Right. And I think that's a big thing with many businesses like you're talking about the awards, you know so many different types of businesses go and everybody's happy. Everybody's excited. Everybody's so supportive. And many of the people have the very similar, similar experiences with like, you know, because we all live in the same community. So economic, you know, consideration, labor consideration, you know, growth, 
uh, because we're all working in the same pool, you know, so yeah. you realize that you are, you know, we're all very connected more than maybe we would originally assume. Sure. Yeah. And as you know, there are many banks in the chamber. Yes. So, and at every event, um, sometimes we are overwhelming the amount of people that are there. Yeah. Uh, but, but all banks of all different sizes, all different cultures, um, they all have their own, their own um, connection to people. And that's why generally when, when I do speak at these meetings, it is generally, I always say, you never, never decide on a whim who is going to be your banker. Mm. Um, any, any bank can get you a checking account, um, mm. savings account, um, loans, anything like that. But when you're looking to have, actually have a personal connection with someone, you really should speak to many different ones mm -hmm. and find out what person and what culture, what bank culture fits you best. Mm -hmm. um, some some businesses actually need the bigger banks. They, re they really do need them. They do things for them that maybe we can't. Mm -hmm. But it's mostly the personal connection that you that you have with the person that you're working with mm. and very important to do i think talk talk to a few mm. see which yeah. one is your best fit you're right you, you know you're right there there are a lot of uh banks um at you know the community events the chamber events um and you all have a very different personality right but with the same core focus of helping people Absolutely. Right. So um, and and, you know, what I love about Mill Yard after reading about it is I do like that. It's it's kind of like going home to mom and dad's. Right. You're you're in Nashua. You're small. You know, you can reach somebody at any time. It's like a very intimate, approachable organization, whereas and, and it sounds like you're saying that that's going to continue to be the focus, you know, which is nice. You know, uh, you're right. Some people need like something where they can reach, you know, their bank out in California, let's say, and go to an ATM. Sure. So they do need something that's larger. So that has different strengths. But um, I, I really, uh, you know, I haven't heard anyone speak about a bank the way that, you know, Milliard um, has been built and created where, it is. I guess that's the best way to say it. It's like going to mom and dad's house. You go in there, you talk to your <laughs> banker, you know, like <laughs> it's in that, you know, it's just in Nashua, right? Is that your only location? No, we have one in Hollis as well. Oh, you do. Okay. Right Nashua, across Hollis, the right next door. Yeah. Neighbors. <laughs> yes. Yes. Right. It's, um, it really is a personal touch, I think. And I think it's because of the fact that we were founded to basically work with community businesses, work with those people in the community. And I have had people say to me, I love going into Milliard Bank. I walk in there and they call me by name. Oh. You know, they know who I am. Um, they know my kids. You know, they talk to them. Um, I mean, especially out in the Hollis area, because it is a rural area, rural community. And um, they really do. It's mostly consumers that will go into that into that location, but even not, I mean, they, they know you mm. and um, that's a special touch that you don't get everywhere. We don't have big turnaround. Mm. Um, it's, it's a great place to work. Um, I mean, I can come to work and be with my friends, you know? So it's, right. it's nice. It's a nice touch. Yeah. And so um, I, uh, next week, I think I'd like to know. So you have an event coming up so that you can highlight all these great things about Mill Yard and all the things that you as the vice president of uh, of business banking have to offer. And so tell me about the event that's coming up and uh, in details. Give me details. OK, I'll give you details. <laughs> um, it will be held at our Hollis location. Okay. Um, the overflow part. Parking generally will be across the street. And anybody that knows the marketplace in Hollis, um, that little plaza, yeah. that's where you can park. You walk right across the street. We're right there. Mm -hmm. um, it's a beautiful little branch. But we will have, it is going to be outdoors because it is small. But we have a big 10 by, I mean, 20 by 40 tent. Uh, we will have live music. Fun. Um, 
and it will be nothing overwhelming. It's uh, somebody just playing guitar and singing in the background. Mm-hmm. Um, and we will have, obviously, we'll have food, um, appetizer kind of things. And we will have beer, wine, soda, water. Um, but we are highlighting um, Beaverbrook Association in Hollis yes. as our nonprofit. Mm-hmm. And somebody will be speaking from someone is coming to the event to speak um, on their behalf. She heads up the programs over there, a lot of the programs. So she'll be wonderful. Um, And then I'm not sure yet who is going to speak. I'd like to get Frank to say a few words. Right. (laughs) But um, we'll have a couple of raffle items and it'll just be a fun, interactive evening. Um, Good place for people for networking. I mean, it's great networking and introducing people to each other mm-hmm. is a big part of it. So I'm excited. I'm really excited. Nice fall theme. So, yeah. And what a great uh, backdrop too, because that's right in the center of Hollis where you're talking about apple orchards. It's quintessential New England, you know, and the weather has been so gorgeous. I should knock on wood. I hope it's gorgeous for you with the outdoor tent, but um, you know, I love that you uh, are uh, highlighting um, Beaver Brook. I, I grew up in Hollis and I used to go to Beaver Brook as a child all the time. And Beaver Brook is one of our clients now. And Lindsay Jones and Aaron Kennedy are our points of contact there. They are wonderful human beings. And they really they, are. They really are. And they have done such a great job, you know, from when I was a child, you know, from that perspective and, and you know, hiking in the woods there and growing up with the different um like activities that they would have to now as a woman in business and seeing them from that perspective, sure. they're really honoring what Beaver Brook is, you know, so right. and what it's supposed to be. And uh, so I love that. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, and then I love that you said that you're trying to get Frank to talk, which means, so here's the founder of the bank. This, this like just drives your point home that it's an approachable mm-hmm. community bank that the founder will be there, you know, and he's going right. to celebrate with everyone. He will. He will. Um, And he's very good about things like that. Um, Very much into the community. And those people who are from Nashua, most of them know Frank. He is Mr. Nashua. (laughs) uh, And his his grandfather was in banking many years ago with the old Nashua Trust Company. Um, And he kind of took him under his wing and he started, I mean, he started from the lowest point and went all the way through. Mm -hmm. So he can, he can attest to the fact that there are many different um, aspects of banking that will speak to you individually as a person Mm -hmm. and that meeting people and helping them, um, educating them to get them from point A all the way through has been and I think that's where my connection came so, so close here mm-hmm. that when I was um, asked to come on board, um, I jumped at the opportunity mm-hmm. and I had, I mean, I was in retirement. I came out. Um, <laughs> it I says something. Yes. And I, I like, I like being active. I like being involved in the community and being involved with other people. I'm a, I'm a social butterfly. Mm-hmm. I've got, I've got to be out there talking to people and um, making them feel good about what they do Mm -hmm. and making them feel good about what we do. Mm. Yeah. You know, one last thing I'll say about, you know, uh, being approachable is I received uh, um, a letter, a handwritten note from you in the mail (laughs) uh, with my name and my mother's name, the former owner of our company. And, uh, and, you know, you know, dear Mary and Janelle, like, we'd love to have you join us. And it was a handwritten note and that you signed personally. And I was, and I called you to be like, oh my gosh, what a great touch. (laughs) So you very much are available and human. (laughs) So so I look forward to the event. So what is the date of the event? It is September 18th and it's from 530 to 7. Um, so it's not overwhelmingly long, mm-hmm. but it's plenty of time for you to be able to enjoy yourself, listen to some music, get some fresh air. Um, we will have um, cider as well from Brookdale. Great. And um, we, it's just such a great community 
um, to be able to have people there to come out and see Mm. um, what it is like out there. Mm. Well, great. I am so uh, glad. So this is, uh, I ask everybody this question, where can we find you? You can find me at milliardbank.com. It's kkeating at milliardbank.com. Um, if you go to the website, you can find our main number there, but I am usually out and about. So you will see me anywhere <laughs> in the but, community um, on the go. <laughs> that's why my personal cell phone is on my business card. Okay. And that I'm happy to give you now if anybody's looking to reach sure, out. Yes. 603 867 7617. Um, that is probably the easiest way to reach me, either that or by cake heating at milliardbank.com. Wonderful. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us today. This was a really fun conversation. And I you're appreciate very it. welcome. Thanks. I enjoyed it very much. Thanks for asking. <laughs> <laughs> Bye-bye, Karen. Bye.